This is Andy with Headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphones Show, and today I have another review video for you guys. It's going to be a review of the Andover PM50. This is a planar magnetic over-ear open-back headphone that comes in right at around $499, so 500 bucks. Let's take a look. For anybody who's wondering, I have already posted my full written review of the Andover PM50 along with measurements on the Gross standardized measurement rig, the 43AG that we're using for this on the headphones.com website. And I'll leave a link in the description for anybody who wants to check that out and see the full written review as well. All right, so let's begin by talking about build quality, design and comfort. Andover sends with the headphones a number of pads. You get these small pads here. You get the medium pads here, which are a little bit more cushiony. Uh, and then they were actually kind enough to send me a larger set of pads here. Uh, and I believe they are sending these along to customers as well um, if these other ones don't fit. Um, now, they do change the sound a little bit, but not that much. Uh, but the problem with the pads is that your ear doesn't actually fit inside them. These are very small for, for the two that come with the headphone, both the small pads here and the medium pads for, for thickness here. Uh, they The ear kind of just, this is the ear from the measurement rig, it it actually obscures, like it actually doesn't really properly fit inside. But then when Andover sent over these, what I'm calling here the large pads, uh, they actually fit me very well and I can wear it uh, with no problems whatsoever. Um, and speaking of the rest of the comfort, it's actually really, really nice when I get the fit right. It's a lightweight planar magnetic design um, and I have no problems wearing this for long periods of time. Uh, the cup design here has this wood on it. I actually really like the way this looks. The build doesn't feel as premium because there's not really that much material going on here, but I, I'm a fan of how the build and the design and the style is for this. Um, I, I really like you know the way that this looks and feels. So this gets good marks from me for the build, design, and comfort with these large pads. Uh, with the small pads, really not so much. Now, of course, the PM50 is a planar magnetic headphone, and actually, when I take the pads off, they just sort of pop off like that. You can see what's going on with the driver here. I'll just put this up next to my face so you can see that. You can see it's actually a fairly small planar magnetic transducer in here. I believe it's only around 50 millimeters, which isn't a huge deal, but it was surprising to me to see this. Um, but then that also kind of makes sense because it is a little bit lighter. In fact, this is one of the smaller and more lightweight planers that I've come across. So this makes a certain amount of sense. And actually, one of the cool things about this is that this is just held in with normal screws. So if anybody's looking to maybe get into modding headphones, this might be an uh, interesting design to, to start with. But now we got to get to what everybody here actually wants to know about. How does the PM50 sound? If Andover's website and marketing material is any indication, this should be somewhat of a reference sound. This is supposed to be a neutral kind of sound. There's even a lot of testimonials on the site where people are are claiming that this would be good for mixing and mastering or pro use and unfortunately that is absolutely emphatically not the case but we'll talk about that with frequency response first let's get into the detail retrieval and image clarity and for the mid-range there actually is quite good detail retrieval and image clarity um, so you get a lot of that sort of textural nuance and you get good structural definition for the images coming across uh, in the treble in the in the mid treble like right between maybe like 6 and 9k hertz um, it, the PM50 is unfortunately quite grainy. Uh, it's considerably more grainy with these pads here, with the, with the medium pads, uh, and it's less grainy with the large pads and the small pads, but overall I found there's quite a bit of haze up there, um, and by that I mean sort of the absence of detail. Um, it's certainly not as good as where it is in the mid-range. Uh, the upper treble is quite good for detail, so all the air quality coming through we're talking anywhere around like 11k, 12k hertz. Uh, that's actually quite good on the PM50. Um, but then also the bass is really not all that uh, detailed or well defined. It's quite, uh, you know, single monotone kind of one note all the way down and you don't get all the textural nuance and stuff like that that you might be looking for in the bass. For speed and dynamics, yeah, the PM50 is a very fast headphone, just like many other planar magnetic designs, so you see the planar advantage with the PM50. For the most part, things feel tight and well controlled. Unfortunately, this isn't really helped by its tonality, and to make matters worse, it doesn't have much for dynamics or punch or impact. Um, this is a bit of a wimpy sounding headphone in the, in the bass. Uh, and then, you know, just across the board, it doesn't have that sort of excursive punch and slam that you often find 
in higher end planar magnetic headphones. But for a lightweight planar, this isn't exactly something that I'm surprised by. Most lightweight planars, you know, like the Odyssey LCD One, uh, you know, they they don't really have much for punch and slam, and that's kind of the trade off that you end up going for with it with a planar magnetic headphone these days. I find, especially with the lightweight ones. So you know, this isn't like an Odyssey LCD X or an LCD Two uh, that has a little bit more of those you know impact dynamics going on there. The Soundstage is just a little bit better than something like an HD6 XX, which is sort of that more in your head kind of thing. Uh, with the PM50, it's uh, definitely a step behind many other headphones in this price range. It's considerably further behind the DT1990 Pro. It's behind the Hyphen Sundara, and so it's not as spacious as the Sundara. But for imaging, you also don't get the same three blob issues that you do with the Sennheiser series. Um, it's not just like left, right, and center. You actually do have more of it filled in there in the front with the PM50. Um, so that's a good thing at least. So for soundstage and imaging, not the best, but also not the worst. When it comes to timbre, we have to talk about material-related timbre. And in that sense, the PM50 is distinctly a planar magnetic sounding headphone. Uh, it has that sort of plucked character that I personally enjoy, but I know a lot of people aren't as into that because it doesn't sound quite as natural as maybe a dynamic driver does. For the frequency response related timbre, there are definitely some major issues with the PM50 um, it, where it sounds really unnatural, um, but let's talk about frequency response next and we'll get into that. Now, if we look at the frequency response of the PM50, these measurements were again done on the Gross 43AG. We'll see that there is a sharp bass roll off with just about all the pads at around like 65, 70 hertz. And what this means is that while you do get quite a bit of, you know, upper bass and even some mid bass there, uh, the sub bass is basically non-existent. And then the mids are actually pretty agreeable. The, the lower mids uh, are, are decent until you get right up to around, you know, 1.5K where the elevation should be there, the elevation that our ears are imparting to the frequency response. Uh, and it's not. This is where it's completely gone. Uh, and then it stays gone until you see a number of peaks there in the treble. And you might say to yourself, well, the peaks are getting it closer to the target. That's a good thing, right? Well, unfortunately, you have to look at how the balance is overall. And this peak at 9K Hertz causes this weird shimmering quality to happen with the PM50 as well. So not only is it really dark and warm and subdued, uh, it's also out of balance in the treble, in the mid treble. Uh, and then above that... Uh, it's not actually a problem at all. The, the rest of the treble is is quite balanced, uh, you know, for the, for the air qualities in the upper treble. So there are absolutely no issues there. Um, so what does this mean for the PM50? This is a very convoluted and uneven and muffled sounding headphone. For all of the, you know, talk about this being a flat measuring and neutral sounding headphone, there's been a drastic error when it comes to what that actually is. And let me explain that a little bit. If you were to look at how a perfectly neutral speaker measures in front of, with a microphone placed right directly in front of it, that should be, you know, a flat line all the way across. With headphones, you have to contend with the fact that these are on your head and you have ears, uh, both the outer ear and then your inner ear as well. And this is going to amplify certain frequencies. And so it's really important for there to be a rise there in the frequency response that is appropriate for what your ear is imparting to your brain. Your brain expects to hear an elevation there between 1K Hertz and 9K Hertz. And I've talked about this in the past, but this is one of the reasons why when we say headphones, we want our headphones to measure flat. That requires quite a bit of qualification because we only want that to be the case on compensated graphs. We only want headphones to measure flat on compensated measurements. And that means that when we're looking at a raw graph, we really don't want our headphones to measure flat because if they do, that's gonna sound extremely dark, muted, and muffled. And when we look at the Andover PM50's raw frequency response, we see that unfortunately, it measures flat. This is a huge problem for anybody who is expecting the headphone to sound neutral or expecting the headphone to sound like a reference sound should. And you know, I don't think it's the end of the world for a headphone to sound warm or dark. And while it might not be, you know, to my preference, I know there's a lot of people out there who enjoy warm or even dark headphones, but in the case of the PM50, this is a huge mistake. It's not just a warm and dark sounding headphone. This actually has negative pinna gain, meaning that the area that should be elevated because our ears are amplifying those frequencies between one and nine K Hertz, it's actually a little bit withdrawn on the PM50 for two sets of pads. The, the ones that actually fit me correctly Correctly, unfortunately are the worst for this. And that means that this is beyond dark sounding in the upper mid range and treble. Uh, and so anybody who's expecting this to sound neutral uh, is gonna get a completely different experience uh, out of this. And so just to reiterate, if you like the way that this headphone sounds, don't let me persuade you otherwise. 
My issue is with the suggestion that something like this, with this kind of tonality, sounds neutral or flat. That is completely incorrect and misleading, especially in mixing and mastering applications or any kind of pro audio environment. This is the last headphone that you should be using in that situation because it will dramatically skew whatever you're, it is that you're mixing. This is a problem for voiceovers. So really, under absolutely no circumstances can I recommend a headphone with this tuning for those applications. And unfortunately, when I tried to EQ this, it also didn't really improve all that much. If you're using fairly wide Q values for your adjustments and you're elevating the upper mid-range uh, and treble by quite a bit, uh, you need to find a way to get that 9K Hertz peak back in line and then you gotta start using some fairly narrow Q values, which does, it does help. Unfortunately, it doesn't improve it enough to overcome some of the shortcomings that it has for its technical aspects, like for example, the graininess that exists in the mid-treble. And it's at this point where I would normally do some comparisons with other headphones, uh, but the Andover PM50 is so far down my list that it's actually at the very bottom of my overall ranking right now. Um, this isn't the worst headphone that I've heard overall, but it is certainly among the worst headphones that I've heard. Um, and so, for example, this is this comes in at $500. The Hi-Fi Man Sundara is far and away a better headphone in every single aspect um, that I really just can't recommend this. But beyond that, the HD6XX is a far better headphone than this. The Odyssey LCD-1 is a far better sounding headphone. And again, all of those are better for pro applications or reference than what people describe as reference. And so really it should come as no surprise that I cannot recommend the Andover PM50 whatsoever, which is a bit of a shame because there are certain things that I really do like about it. Like for example, the build and the design. I like the lightweight nature. I like the cup design, you know, uh, it's comfortable and there is good uh, lower mid-range detail as well. I think the PM50 demonstrates that it's so easy for us to misunderstand the concept of flat and neutral and it's really important for you know, people to get clear on that. Anybody who is developing headphones, I would encourage you to just do a little bit more research on how these should measure, uh, especially if your goal is to make it a neutral reference class headphone, which the Andover PM50 is not. Anyways, that does it for this review. If you guys like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing, uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.